Adriatica Ionica stage to finish up Monte Grappa here, as you can see here, it's like 19k at 9%. And this is the main thing. Gazprom Resvelo on the front from pretty much the bottom of the climb. It's like 18k climb. And Promsky from Astana decides it's time to go. And then you've got Androni, I believe this is uh, Luca Govi uh, no, sorry, uh, Ricardo Luca. Yeah, he's trying to close this gap. Then you've got Tetz Vazion in third wheel, and then also Mahawi Kudas is slightly further back as well. And Promsky was a really strong rider, like, I, I, you sort of heard of him, he's decent, but watch around this hairpin, watch second wheel, second wheel, go around, wait, and he's about to slide out the big boy, oh, uh-oh, and this is a key, key point, Mahawi Kudus, who's probably Astana's main guy, he basically is on the floor, Promsky's like, okay, I'm going to attack, this is now chaos, everyone's split the race, because it happened in second wheel, and this is the key point on the race, now we're going to skip ahead to 5.6 kilometers to go, and Mahawi Kudus is like, okay, fair enough, I've just caught up with you lot, he did a big effort to get across, and then attack straight over the top, great teamwork by Astana at this point, it's about to go disastrously wrong, but we'll wait that um, a little bit longer for me to go through that, but anyway, now Bardiani have uh, five riders, so really they've got to chase, you got to chase here. Giovanni Carboni is obviously a massive favourite. He had a good jury, got a lot of breaks, um, and also Lorenzo Fortunato, who won at Monte Zoncalan. Obviously, he's outrageous as well, um, having done that and binning Jan Tranik up there. So Fortunato's um, just basically chasing across to Carboni um, and the other Astana lot. And to be fair, Fortunato looked pretty good at this point. Like he's you know, he just rode his own tempo, and it's a steep climb, like, you know, there's up and downs, like, the average isn't as crazy, but the last, like, 2k, I think, are about 10, 11%, Fortunato here doesn't have the most beautiful style around, but it don't matter, because the man just puts out good watts, and, like, 5.6k to go, 10 second gap, it's like, no worries, no worries, and Bardiani here, like, Corvilli and Monaco, like, they're good, but they're just not the same, anyway, up front, Carboni, um, was basically getting one 2 by Promsky and Kudas all day, tough day out for him, but I do think Astana, should have probably realized that they could lean on Carboni a bit more because like yeah he had teammates but they were obviously not good enough so they could have said well look Fortunato is going to come and he's probably pretty strong so I reckon you need to pull some work and get him to do a bit more work because all they really did is do one twos the whole time which was fine but ultimately it brought Fortunato into the game which is probably not good considering his current form but Promsky goes on the slight downhill and um, this is what I mean the climbs obviously up and down all over the place uh the other outrageous ride today was David Rebellin he came top 10 and he's like 52 it's ridiculous like how that boy is now stronger than chris room i don't understand but anyway that's not for me to decide anyway skipping ahead a long way 2.6k to go everyone's back together fortunato bridge there there's about a billion body army riders there's two astana lads and promsky again decides you know what it's time to go on the attack and this is another great move by astana and i really think um for me this was the best move of the day for them because it forces fortunato to chase um, Carboni was just basically sour and it was just Fortunato. So Fortunato's basically ridden the last, what, like six kilometers on the front, but he doesn't care. He's a strong boy. He just does the work and he's just there and he looks like he's not trying too hard, but he definitely is. And Promsky, to be fair, I thought had it at this point. I was like, guaranteed win it. But we now skip to 1k ahead. He doesn't like the moto very much, but we're now going to see some absolute whack tactics from Astana. I don't know what they're doing. We're just going to play it all the way through because I think you've really got to think. So here, Mahawi Kudus sitting at the back he's got nothing to do all he's got to do is just sit on and then let them all burn their energy and then whack him in the sprint if it comes back together or just leave them like the one thing obviously you don't do unless you are de designated team leader which maybe he was but i don't think astana was that obvious um but fortunato puts in a little dig here carboni looks like he's going to cover it so could again just wait 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 promsky's the boy up the road it's steep here like you know promsky's either going to get away or he's not but it doesn't really matter what you're going to do as long as you don't do one thing which we know he's going to do, which is attack across him. Because the point is, is that if you keep him up front, Fortunato's going to be like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm not good, I'm just, you know, struggling. And just mentally, like, if you're going to try and give someone a character chase, why would you do that? Instead of you're sitting on that wheel like he is now, you're just, in the back of head, Fortunato's like, oh, he's getting a free ride. It might be 11%, and it might be 10 watts, but, you know, 10 watts at the end of the race could be could be a decent difference um and carboni to be fair just realized that there were stronger guys on the day and at this point it's pretty obvious promsky is going to get caught in my opinion so you but then again kudis has two options he can again wait until they're actually caught and then it's going to be pretty obvious or just go early which i again i'm not sure is the one promsky here like you know he could have done well um 
you know, maybe it would have been a bit tough for him to actually win the whole stage um, on his own at this point because Fortunato was looking pretty strong the whole time. And to be honest, I don't think there's much chance of of Promsky winning now. Like you can sort of just tell the way it is, like the way he's pedaling. Um, he's definitely going to get caught, um, which is not great for Astana because again, they've now got Kudus and then it's like, well, Fortunato has done all this work and brought him back. Like you might say, oh, that's a blessing in disguise. Like he's done so much work. But I think mainly it just shows how strong he is and that actually it's going to be really hard to beat him. And your numerical advantage on 11% gradient is really hard to play off just because, you know, like you just got to be strong. It doesn't really matter who's there. Um, and Kudus is again just chilling out at the back, just enjoying life. Um, and Promsky again just off the front, looking good. Like it just, you know, there's no, there's no need to stress at this point. It's properly steep, um, the, the Monte Grappa at this point in the race. And again, it's just relax, relax, relax. There's no one coming from behind. Like the lads finished like 40 seconds behind Filippo Zana, who was body only GSF with Finazes. Um, closest riders so like and even if they do bridge like you know that they, they obviously got got no gas and it's so steep I just think you know you you really just got to dig in here and just see what what the uh, you what sort of um, things when if you roll the dice uh, and Promsky's rolled those dice he's up on he's out and about and I were just you know looking pretty decent at this point I thought he was pedaling squares earlier but still looks all right uh, and you know maybe it makes sense but anyway Kudus decides out this happened you know what boys, it's time to go. And this was the dumbest move I've ever seen because he attacks across and you're like, okay, yeah, he's gapped them. Wow, he's super, super strong. But the point is he didn't. Fortunato actually wasn't that far behind him. Now this is a 10 out of 10 reaction. He looks back and he's just like, hey, what are you doing, son? Kudas, you attacked across. So now Kudas is gone. And at this point, again, could have been a good move. Like, Promsky is just a bit confused and probably like, well, I'll just hop on your wheel. But Fortunato is like trying to get Carboni to close the gap, can't close the gap. Fortunato says, all right, I'll just have to do it on my own. And we saw this at Montezonca Land. Those, the last little attack he has towards the end is actually pretty good. I think he's got some punch, the boy. Not just a pure climber. I think he could have a little, little bit of a punch. And here, Kudus is on the front and Fortunato is just catching up to Promsky. And he's going to blast by Promsky. And to be honest... Kudus is now sprinting full gas. There's like 100 meters to go. And you're like, oh, he's done it. He's done it. He's done it. Nah, Fortunato comes absolutely blasting past. Kudus had nothing left. Looked like he was about to die on the finish line. And that was just horrendous tactics from Astana here with Fortunato coming around at the end to win. And I think if we're going to have a quick recap, what I would say to Astana is number one, figure out who's strongest on the day. You need some communication in there. You need to know who's better. I think sending Promsky up was fine. But I think you really shouldn't have attacked across. I think you should have lent on him as well because it was getting flat. So then if Fortunato was coming across, like you could have just sat on it, it would have been decent. But instead you attack across, Fortunato's like half in the draft and his character chase, just shocking tactics. But anyway, big win for Fortunato, big um, decent result for some of the other Conti lads and obviously David Rebelin, but horrendous result for Astana considering they're pretty much the only World Tour team here. Um, so anyway, cheers for watching, hope you did enjoy and we will see you in the next one. Da eh, Fortunato, poi è passato Alessandro Monaco a 40 secondi, ma che sprint a doppia velocità, a doppia velocità, aveva il 53 innestato e nulla ha potuto, ormai era vuoto di energie. Eh, Merawi Kudus beffato agli ultimi 25 metri e chissà, e chissà cosa gli dirà eccolo il terzo arrivato Vadim Proschi io credo che Merawi Kudus lì passando sul traguardo eh, l'avrà già capito di aver fatto un eh sì. frittatone non un frittato lascialo davanti se poi gli altri